Okay, I'll try to do it on English. So uh, if it's um, not gonna work well, I'll fall back to back to the Russian. <laughs> um, so before we start with the actual talk about the uh, decorators, I want to show this uh, little example. Who familiar with this code? Whoever seen, please raise your hands. At least once in a while. Great. Yes, a simple Angular component. Um, this is actually the you know, the rendering uh, of this component. So um, here's a few questions. First of all, uh, assume this is the uh, production build. Uh, how many JavaScript files currently on the page? Who thinks it's uh, two or more? Who thinks it's only one? Okay. And the second question: What the total weight of the JavaScript files right now on the on the on this page? Who think it's uh, above a mega? Who think nobody? 5k, 500k, and more? Okay, 300k and more? A hundred? Less than a hundred? Okay. So first of all, there is no Angular at all on this page. It's not an Angular code. It's a proper or vanilla TypeScript. Um, currently on the page is only about uh, 1K of the JavaScript files. Um, this is the component. It's a simple decorator. OK, that's how it looks like. Decorator, have some con get uh, some configuration, create the elements based on the configuration, load the template URL. Based on the template URL and configuration, load the uh, HTML template and actually transpiling all this, uh, you know, the variables like a title, for example, that you can see here and this here, and you can see it on the page. Okay, so this is the simple way how we can implement our own, um, you know, the creator to build to create the components. Okay. Um, my name is Daniel Ostrowski, and I'm team lead at Kaltura. Um, and also, since this meetup, I'm co organizer at uh, NG Heroes. Um, and today we will talk about the Angular custom decorators. Um, who's seen my uh, talks on the previous, on the JavaScript Israel about the meta programming and decorators on the TypeScript? Okay, so I'll do it really, real fast, okay, just to make alignment about the history of the decorators. Uh, decorators count on the stage two in the TC39 in JavaScript. It's a process where you know the, all the different uh, suggestions and propositions about what have to be on the in in JavaScript uh, is a standard. Currently, it's not a standard. It's uh, we supporting it on. Um, it's supported by TypeScript. It's supported by Bubble, and hopefully in uh, 10, 20 years, it will actually uh, will be part of the JavaScript. Uh, but we can use uh, uh, decorators. We can see the decorators in uh, in some uh, frameworks, and also we have some different libraries like core decorators, Angular. Use we know it. Okay, all the Stencil, Mobix, and SGS. Um, what decorators can do? Um, basically, a lot of different things: code analyzing, class mixing, performance measuring, many, many, many other things. Uh, I have a huge talk about the, we'll talk about it on the, with Eliran in uh, Ukraine in November about the decorators in general, like uh, about an hour talk, what we can do and why we need to use the decorators. Um, it's an hour? Yes, it's an hour. <laughs> and you have talk only for 30 minutes? <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, the decorators. The decorators is a high order function, okay? That means we have a function that takes in another function, extends its behavior, probably adds some, uh, I say without modifying it, but somebody, not, not everybody agree with me. Um, but basically, yes, it's uh, extend the behavior of the function and return it. Um, that's how it looks, simple class. Uh, the add. Right, indicates uh, it's actually the indicator for the parser that he's gonna talk, uh, he's gonna uh, deal with the decorator, and the my decorator is actually the name of our high order function that will return the function, etc., etc., etc. That how basically looks a uh, simple um, class member decorator read only, uh, and this is our decorator function that actually accepts target. This is our class key. It's a name of a 
decorated method, okay? So currently it will be like time left, okay, string. And descriptor, um, it's a descriptor of this uh, of this proper of this uh, method, okay? The thing that we can get by Okay, the thing that we can get by uh, using the static uh, method on object get on property descriptor, descriptor we pass in there the um, the class name of the property and then you will get the descriptor. Descriptor has uh, a few. Uh, it's like a meta. It's like a metadata of the property, of the method. Okay, it have a, a value itself. It can be simple value, string, number, or function if it's method. Uh, it can be uh, writable, true, false. And for example, here we're doing the writable false, and then we change it to writable to false, and then we don't. You can't change this um, method anymore. It's a kind of protection for the for the method on the class. Uh, also, it have a configurable true, false. That means you can set the configurable false, and then you cannot change the uh, descriptor anymore. And also enumerable that it's actually uh, true, false. Uh, if you will see it on object keys or not, okay? If you can uh, iterate over the uh, this key when you iterate over the class or even the object, if a property or method of some object will be enumerable false, uh, the iterator will uh, uh, will skip it. Um, the previous articles about the descriptor, like more uh, more about the descriptor, how to work it in the examples and what is this you can find we can find here and also the video on YouTube from JavaScript Israel all these talks. Um, today, I'm not going to uh, do the live coding, but I want to show the live examples, okay? Uh, one of the things why I'm doing this because I want to show the uh, NGX custom decorator library that I'm trying to build, it's open source library. Uh, I would appreciate anybody of you, everybody, if you go to the uh, GitHub, NPM, GitHub actually fork, uh, or at least leave your feedback, or at least any idea for the decorator that can be useful. Okay, so I'll show first of all the examples of what the decorators can be and how they work. Uh, let's start with the, some generic decorators. Um, these decorators can be used basically uh, not only on the Angular; it can be the same on the TypeScript, vanilla JavaScript, uh, you know, in Node.js, whatever, where you want. Let's start with a deprecation. Here the deprecation. Let's assume we have some class, API, public API, we want to deprecate um, some method, property. Okay, so we can add simple decorator that called deprecate, and it will show the deprecation warning. Here. Each time we will use it, okay? Each time somebody will use, will fire this um, function, this deprecated method, we can see the message about it. Uh, we can use it, by the way, all our decorators, we can pass different, uh, we can pass arguments, and in this case, for example, I can change it from on init only to the, from false to the true. And then the message will be only on init and actually won't be uh, exist anymore, you know, on fire. So this is, uh, let's see the implementation of, the, of this message. Has a lot of code that actually is not so relevant for the decorator itself, like all this is just, you know, different checking, the URL, the different, uh, it support like the URL for the more info, go to this URL to see the information about the deprecation. Uh, the default message, we can pass the some external message uh, uh, that we want to, you know, to be showing instead of uh, m um, method name and uh, uh, you know, the, the method signature is basically connected from the uh, class name. Okay, you can see it by the way here. Let's reload it. Okay, generic decorator component. This is the class name and the deprecated function. This is the name of the function that we're actually trying to deprecate. Okay. Um here's if and what we do in here, this this code is more, more important. Okay. We return what we're doing is actually this function, right? High order, uh, this function returns the function that returns uh, that accept the target key and descriptor, and we change in the descriptor value by our own function, okay, the deprecation var upper 
that print the message that we want to print, okay? The logic of the what message should be printed actually is here, it's pretty simple. And the original, uh, and the results of the original function, okay? It's clear? Okay. Um, next, the protected, okay? Read only. We're trying to hack the function and uh, where is it? Read only, okay? Here's read only. I will remove this decorator and now the function is hacked, okay? What I'm doing here is by click I'm firing this function, hack the protected function, and I'm trying to actually to, uh, to change the method, okay? the protected function to return something else, not to return the original response, but to return something else, and then I'm actually trying to console it, okay, to log it. So when I'm, <coughs> hey, meh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so when I'm, if I want to protect my function, if, I, if I'm using, for example, it's very useful for the public uh, libraries and the public ABIs, and we want to be sure that nobody changed our own functions, we can use the read-only uh, decorator. And then if somebody will try actually to change the, uh, the function, will get the uh, exception, cannot sign the read-only property, okay? The implementation of this is pretty simple. You have seen it on the slides, okay? We just taken the, the function that accept target, key, descriptor. Inside of this descriptor, we change the variable to the false. And also I have the configurable, uh, configurable is configurable, okay? And passing, I can pass here the variable, uh, the uh, argument true or false if I want to be, you know, to freeze this method and to be sure that even nobody can change it back to writable true and then change the function back, etc. Um, timer. Let's talking about the debugging and the, when when it will if it will be boring, just stop me, okay? Because I can continue forever. Um, here's our timer. Uh, it's a function that actually counts the number of uh, prime numbers, okay? Uh, inside of the big some big number. So let's see how it works. Yeah, okay, so it took one second and you know, 1,339 milliseconds, okay, to run this, to run this function, check somewhere. That's, uh, that's it, it's just a timer that you can add and, uh, by the way, pay attention here that I'm passing here my own uh, logger, okay, I can, instead of to pass the console log one, I can pass my own logger, for example, that sends data to the server, to the some, uh, you know, third party service uh, login, like, you know, logly and whatever, uh, instead of using the console log. And uh, here's the implementation. Um, I'll try to zoom in. Yeah. Okay. Again, the function returns the function that have target key and descriptor. First of all, I'm saving the origin value. The origin value is uh, the function that we are decorating, okay? Our function, our, our method that we want to decorate. And then I change it, okay, by my own function. Um, I'm saving the date, date before, date after. Here's the message, okay? I'm using the log, the custom log if it was passed. If I have the um, log as a function type, so I actually will use the log that was passed into my decorator. And the, here's just saving the results that uh, the origin method will return, okay? And at the end of all this, I'm returning the origin, the results of the origin function, okay? In, who remember the decorators, decorators to the JavaScript, decorators to TypeScript, they came from Python, and if you, who use Python, who remember, who know, who familiar with the decorators in Python, so basically it's in Python, it's called wrapper, okay? This is the simple wrapper of the, uh, as a part of uh, as a part of uh, decorator, um, Angular. Let's start with this one. But before, let's go here. Now this is actually Angular dedicated or basically Angular uh, um, SDK material CDK. Sorry, material CDK dedicated uh, decorator. Um, assuming. 
assume, let's assume that in, inside our component we want to know when uh, layout is changed, when the device, we have some changes on the device, you know, the uh, resolution size, rotation, uh, squeezing, window size changed, uh, etc. Okay, uh, it can be statically, right? We can say, okay, we want on load to get the data to understand what our uh, what the size of the um, device, what the device we're working with, and also it can be dynamically. For example, rotation on the mobile devices, or we want to support actual dynamic um, window size changes. Okay, uh, this is the code that we need to implement. Okay. Now just imagine, imagine for a second if you need it in many different components. We can use it, we can use this data, we can save this data in the store, for example, and subscribe to the store and see it. Uh, and act accordingly, right? We can change, we can set this, uh, uh, we, can we can set this code to any different standalone components where we will use this data, okay? We'll act according to, let's say, to the rotation, etc., 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 etc. Um, I don't like an idea to su to put this type of data, for example, on the state, on the state management, okay? I think uh, somebody will say, no, the st state of the application should hold all everything about the application, the data, the device, the size, the resolution, the, I don't know, the uh, gender of the user, whatever, okay? I think it can be much more simplified. We can use a simple decorator. Where is my decorator? No, okay. Okay, this one, this symbol decorator, okay? This decorator actually will act here. This side is observable and will act dynamically when uh, the layout is changed, okay? And this one is static, it works only on load or when we actually want to, to make the update. Now let's see, it's very easy to see on the X small, small, medium, large, and X large. I will drag it and let's see, up, small, up, X small, small, medium, large, la la la. Rotation, everything works. Also here we can update and this will be updated with the same, okay? Instead of using this code, I can do only this. Here's a, it's a have a dynamic true or false, so it will return actually the observable. And without it, uh, default false will return the static value without any you know, additional observers. If you don't need to, if you don't have, if you don't want to add some extra observable, so we, we need only on the load or on specific time when we want to check. So here's an option just to make it statically. You want to see the implementation of this? Not so? Let's see the implementation. Be honest with you, I don't like the implementation of this much. It can be much better. It was like, you know, uh, kind of trying to do it. Yeah, I think you, you can live with this. Um, let's go, let's see, do you see the code? Um, by the way, here's, let's start with a small one. Here's just a small example of this uh, uh, decorator that have much media based on a given uh, size that we need, okay, on given uh, media query. So we can just pass the media query that we want to be used, okay, and to get and to get notification subscription when it's, you know, true or false, that's it. It's actually very easy. You know, or desktop mobile. It's very useful if you want, you know, you can add, you can just a little bit extend it, uh, desktop, mobile, tablet, whatever and then to have uh, your own small decorator that will you can subscribe and to, to, to property under your class and just to have uh, you know updated um, accordingly on the uh, device your application run in so um, okay let's start with this here here's a actual the decorator itself, okay, and and uh, this is the, actually the wrapper, okay, that wrap all the decorator, the wrapper get target property, um, and uh, I'm, as, you, as you can see here, this function get target property and uh, 
descriptor. I'm not using this descriptor, okay? I don't need it here. I'm passing only the target property and the, var and the argument that I'm passing if it's dynamic or not, okay? And here I'm, I'm just, um, okay, this part that I don't like, this part that goes over the match media, all the uh, possibilities that we have in the, in the match media and the CDK, Angular CDK, all this, okay, and just making the checks. This is true, false, true, false, true, false. And when it's changed, it's subscribed and actually fires the next event. Um, the most interesting thing here is actually the ability to inject the media measure into the simple function, okay? The static function, simple function, to inject this one to this, like something like this, uh, inside of the simple function and not in the component that Angular know how to inject, okay? This is a little bit tricky. Uh, used to be, not anymore. Injector, create, it have provide some uh, dependencies. To find these dependencies when you work with, uh, if you work with your own class, with your own uh, service that you want to inject in the simple functions, very simple. You know, the, the dependencies that you have, you know them, you can pass it here. To inject the Angular, you should go to the implementation of the service to see what are the dependencies, or you can just try with the empty uh, depths, and then it will tell you, it will fire you the error, hey, I need the platform. You add the platform, hey, I need the something else. You add the something else, hey, okay. I had some uh, service, I don't remember the name, it was like dependency of dependency, like, 10 different, you know, the chain of 10 different dependencies in depth, in depth, in depth, until it starts working. But. Oh, theta, theta, directive injection. Thank you for the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> um, theta, 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 directive injector. Store decorator. So, when we want to use, I will just zoom it here because. Hmm, no. Cancel. Okay. Uh, who uses uh, NGRX store? Mm, okay. You don't use NGRX store? No? Not yet. Probably. Not yet. <laughs> Definitely not yet. Um, so, selector. Okay, when we want to select to uh, to get the selector uh, inside of our component, so we inject in the store in the component, and we use in the selector, right? To have it observable and etc. To simplify it, we can use just store selector decorator. We pass in the argument, the name of the property we want it to be uh, on our class, and uh, the selector itself. Okay, it can be just um, kind of. Shortcut, yeah, some type of shortcut. The implementation of it, thanks to Eliran Eliasi. Yes, theta theta directive injector. Okay, and we easily can inject the store inside our uh, static function. Okay, simple, sim sim simple function, standalone function. Um, by the way, the uh, the, fun the decorator, the class decorator, ac don't have, you know, does not accept the target key and uh, descriptor. It accept target. Target is a class. Okay. And then we can use uh, class ng ng component. Okay. Um, ng component def factory. Ng component factory. And inside of the engine component factory, we actually can inject the uh, uh, the thing that we need. In our case, is store. It can be anything else, any other service that we want to inject into, and use it. It will work only on Ivy. I know this is Ivy. Because otherwise, you don't have the ng. Right. In other way, in other ways, in other ways, we can use the previous approach. Yeah. Yes. So we have two here. Okay. One of them is the old one for the before Ivy. And the new one is uh, post Ivy, okay? With Ivy, yes, not post Ivy, with Ivy. And now about web workers. This is my baby. This is what I really, really love. Let's see 
if it will work. Okay. This is actually canvas, right? I just want to show the how that you will see when thread is stuck. Is tucked. So uh, okay. Here's just again the count in the prime numbers. Uh, okay. Stuck. 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 <laughs> Let's reload it. Um, let's do it one more time. Let's start with the regular, not frame, regular primes. Okay, it was pretty fast. We have, it, it was run for 152 milliseconds and found only 200,000 different numbers. Let's one more. Oops, now it's stacked, right? Because it's on the same thread. It works hard. And uh, it found 6,000 prime numbers, about a... Uh, million point one million point eight now i want to run this in web worker let's keep running okay and the prime numbers is counting on the web worker and by the way it's run twice in parallel one of them was promise another one was observable okay so if you have some heavy heavy function that you want to be run on the web worker you can just create Decorator, put it above the function, and it will run in web, in web worker. Not so simple like it sounds, but... Okay. Um, here's two different functions. One of them will return the... Uh, will be observed. Another one will be promise. Um, again, because the web workers is async, right? So it can be. Uh, just regular code. Uh, that's why I created like kind of like a class with the static method. One of them will promise another one observable. It can be also you know the same decorator with uh, just with a parameter observable true false or promise true false or something like this. And here we we this is the function that we actually fire in this uh, prime promise and prime obs and. As, uh, as soon as this uh, promise and, and this observable, we have to do or subscribe or then to get the values, okay? Because it's async function, so we need to act like as a, if, we, if we're decorating function with the web worker, we have, you know, to act accordingly, promise or observable or whatever. Uh, you want to see the implementation of this? Yeah. No, you can say no, it's okay. I don't want to show the implementation. <laughs> um, okay. Let's be honest. Look, this is simple. Um, as you can, this is a class. This is a static function. Okay, the thread caller. Um, as you can see here, uh, we're saving the original. The original value of the, the original function we saving on site, and then we changing it on the async function because it's a promise in this uh, in this case, and uh, um, we s like kind of covering it with the, in, inside of the some function that, uh, inside of the, some uh, object that's called param, and passing to the uh, web worker thread exec. It's not my code. Okay. Here's uh, information somewhere. You can find the information about this code. Um, so I, basically what it does, it's take your function with all your properties, make it as a string. I know it doesn't sound good, but it's just it's create a simple string. Send it to the web worker and do a val on this function. Eval is evil, <laughs> but this works on this case, okay? It just takes separately the function, it takes separately the arguments, and then it's make the evaluation, make it string, like all this is a text, you can, um, you can print it, uh, a, where it was, here. You can show, I can show it here. You see, it's just string function printed. 
and then it's evaluated inside of the uh, inside of the web worker with all arguments that was passed. Um, that's it. So, uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask, and also uh, you're welcome to go. It's a uh, NGX custom decorators. I will uh, thank you for any star fork or at least some, uh, you know, ideas. You can just open the ticket with ideas for the new decorators that can be useful for everybody. Uh, that's it. And it's over for the first meetup.